we were talking about how the autonomic nervous system, how its arrangement of neurons has got uh, some substantial differences uh, between it and the autonomic nervous system. <clears throat> and one of the differences is this arrangement of the number of neurons between the central nervous system and the effector. Remember the effector for the somatic nervous system would be like a muscle. So let's make that your biceps, ooh, big biceps muscle, okay? If, if the somatic neuron <clears throat> nervous system wants to make that biceps muscle co uh, contract, it has got the cell body and dendrites of an axon here in the ventral root, I'm sorry, in the ventral horn, and it'll go out through the ventral root and it'll go straight there. One neuron. The autonomic nervous system has got two neurons. Now, the reason for that actually has a lot to do with how the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system have got different jobs to do. The somatic nervous system is to make a single group of cells, a single motor unit contract. That's its job. <clears throat> and so every neuron is going straight to the cells it's supposed to speak to. <clears throat> but the autonomic nervous system, every time the autonomic nervous system gets activated, particularly the sympathetic nervous system, it's not talking to just one thing. When the autonomic nervous system decides that you need to run from a bear, <clears throat> it is going to talk to all these different parts. So this two neuron setup is allows for that kind of organization. Now, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems, they are different from each other. So the sympathetic nervous system, and it's green here, right? The sympathetic nervous system has got one neuron that goes from the um, uh, central nervous system, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a second, <clears throat> to what's called a ganglion. So first of all, um, a ganglion is an area where lots of neurons have got their cell bodies grouped together. So this is, you remember the dorsal root ganglion? Uh, there are other ganglia in the nervous system and the autonomic nervous system has got um, autonomic ganglia. The nerve, that travels from the central nervous system, here we see the spinal cord, from the central nervous system to the ganglia is called the preganglionic neuron. Now, this is important, write this down. The preganglionic neuron of the parasympathetic system, its axon terminus releases acetylcholine, that's the abbreviation for acetylcholine, ACH, and the sympathetic preganglionic neuron its axon terminus also releases acetylcholine. That's one of those tricky things. Look, I just told you just a couple of slides ago that the dominant neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system was epinephrine and norepinephrine, and the dominant neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic system, nervous system is acetylcholine. And even though that is true, it also should be remembered that acetylcholine is used as the neurotransmitter between the preganglionic and postganglionic neurons of both sides of the autonomic nervous system, all right? There will be a little more detail about that in a second, okay? So acetylcholine is used at the ganglia for both sympathetic and parasympathetic. In general, it will be norepinephrine that will be the neurotransmitter that's released from the postganglionic neurons axon terminus. And so in general, the receptors that will be found on the effectors that are going to receive messages from the sympathetic nervous system, they will be receptors for adrenaline. And so they will be adrenergic receptors, adrenergic receptors, okay? Now, here at the parasympathetic nervous system, acetylcholine is being released. And so in general, the receptor proteins that are on the cells of the effectors for the parasympathetic nervous system, they will be 
cholinergic receptors. Now, if that sounds like the thing I told you a couple slides ago, it kind of is. The thing that's weird is that here at the ganglia for both of them, those are going to be cholinergic receptors. And we're gonna talk in a little more detail about the types of cholinergic and adrenergic receptors. And hopefully you will see that there will end up being a payoff ultimately, okay? Now, there's another difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems arrangement, sorry. And that is that even though there are two uh, nerve cells between the central nervous system and the effector for both parasympathetic and uh, sympathetic, they're not exactly the same. The spinal cord, the, the sympathetic nervous system has got actually a very, um, a very short axon often between the, the central nervous system and the autonomic ganglion of the sympathetic side. So it's kind of short. And then there's a ganglion and a lot of the ganglia are actually right along the spinal column. On the, and then the postganglionic neuron will be very long. It'll, it'll actually go through secondary ganglia and go all the way to the heart or the bladder or wherever, okay? The opposite is true for the parasympathetic nervous system. So for the parasympathetic nervous system, this first, ganglia, uh, first axon is very long. And the second axon is often so short that these uh, parasympathetic ganglia are actually sometimes right on or in their effector organ, okay? So that's another way that they're different. Uh, this one is short for the first one, long for the second one, et cetera, okay? Now, this is just this in writing. So the sympathetic nervous system, that preganglionic neuron, the preganglionic neuron is short very often, and the ganglia sit really close to the spinal cord. And then from the nerve that goes from the ganglion to the effector cell, that's called the postganglionic neuron, you know, pre and post, right? Um, and it is actually rather long. And the opposite is true for the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, a little bit more about receptors. And when I say receptors, when I'm talking about the uh, autonomic nervous system, I probably should say receptor proteins. So when we were talking about the endocrine system, we were talking about receptor proteins. When we were talking about ligand gated channels, in a way they are receptor proteins, right? They receive the signal. Um, so the receptor proteins for the adrenergic side are either going to be alpha receptors or beta receptors. And I'm going to ask you to learn a little bit of detail about beta receptors. The parasympathetic nervous system, they're not called alpha and beta, they are called muscarinic and nicotinic. Um, why? <clears throat> well, for the sympathetic nervous system, they named them alpha and beta because that's Greek and that just makes sense to a scientist. But parasympathetic nervous system, why did they name them muscarinic and nicotinic? Well, nicotine found in tobacco, it is a poison and the way it affects the central nervous system is by attaching to a certain type of cholinergic receptor called the nicotinic receptors, okay? Muscarinic, there is a, mus uh, a mushroom that makes a poison that attacks those receptors. So the receptors for the parasympathetic nervous system, the cholinergic receptors, got named muscarinic or nicotinic depending on which poison attaches to which receptor. However, acetylcholine attaches to both receptors and epinephrine and norepinephrine attach to both types of receptors. <clears throat> There's one more uh, detail you should know about just simply the naming of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system also gets called the thoracolumbar. This should be all one word, but I don't plan. 
the thoracolumbar segment of the autonomic nervous system. Why? Because all of the neurons that are going to end up speaking to all of the different parts of the body, like salivary glands, lungs, everything, they all come off the mostly the thoracic, but partly the lumbar regions of the spinal cord. <clears throat> so thoracolumbar. On the other hand, the parasympathetic nervous system gets called the craniosacral division, craniosacral division of the autonomic nervous system. And that is because the neurons that are going to speak to these same areas, they come off of either the brainstem, brain, cranio, or the sacral region of the spinal cord, okay? So craniosacral thoracic, 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 thoracolumbar, Ooh, easy for me to say. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'd like you to notice something else. I said it on the last lecture, but I want to emphasize it here, which is even though there are two neurons as part of the parasympathetic nervous system, sometimes that second neuron is very, very short. So here's a neuron that goes all the way down here to the stomach and the ganglion and the second neuron is right there in the wall of the stomach. So a long first neuron, which is preganglionic, a short postganglionic neuron. In general, the opposite is true for the sympathetic nervous system. The first one very often can be quite short and the second one very long. There is an exception to that, however. And the exception is right here. <clears throat> a major exception is ah, the adrenal gland. With the adrenal gland, it looks like, it looks like there's just one neuron between the sympathetic nervous system and the adrenal gland. However, that is because the adrenal gland, the adrenal gland is a sympathetic ganglion. Sympathetic ganglion. It's a highly modified sympathetic, sorry, that's supposed to say ganglion. It's a highly modified sympathetic ganglion, but that's the kind of question you might run into my exam, okay? So you can see uh, here that we have got this nerve cell that's coming here, 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 and going all the way down to the adrenal medulla. I should have said the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla, the adrenal medulla is actually a highly modified sympathetic ganglion. And when the sympathetic nervous system gets activated, fight or flight, not only does it do its fight or flight stuff by using axons to speak to all of these different effector organs, but it also will speak specifically to the adrenal medulla, causing the adrenal medulla to release the hormone epinephrine into the bloodstream. And the hormone epinephrine will kind of go everywhere. And strangely, it amplifies these neuronal effects. Okay. All right. We will start there at the beginning of the next video.